Good morning and welcome to the Kila Chari Torah, Halacha review for the day and Sfirah to Omer counting for Wednesday, April 21st. Today is the 24th day of the, yom, of the Omer, Hayom Arba'a Ve'esrim Yom, Shehem Shloisha Shavuois Ushloisha Yamim La Omer. We've been talking the last couple days about uh, laws of Yom Tif, uh, in preparation for uh, Shavuos. Uh, we said that uh, for Pesach and Sukkot, usually we review the laws that pertain particularly to those holidays, and we rarely uh, take the opportunity to, uh, to review the general laws of Yom Tif that apply uh, equally to all the Yom Tov. So in the days leading up to Shavuos, we're taking some time to do that. Uh, we did say in the introduction here that we are allowed to shecht, we're allowed to slaughter uh, meat uh, that means uh, small an- animals, uh, cattle, uh, chickens, uh, if we're going to eat the meat on Yom Tif. Now, not many of us are proficient in uh, the laws of slaughtering, uh, soaking and salting, uh, checking uh, the lungs of animals to make sure they're kosher and all that. So we're going to largely avoid uh, going into depth in, those re- in review of those. If you find yourself uh, slaughtering and in, in, in need to slaughter an, a, a cow or a chicken on uh, Yom Tif, please uh, let's discuss it first. And make sure that you uh, that you have all the uh, all the halachas that apply. Uh, we will just look at one point uh, that says in Kitzur Shulchan Aruch here, is, and I'll read it uh, as it is, and then we'll discuss it. It says, "Living creatures that are mukta may not be given given drink, nor may their food be placed within a close reach, but it should be placed a short distance away." So it says, "Don't uh, put." Uh, first of all, it says that living creatures are mukta. You shouldn't uh, handle them just for enjoyment. Uh, and also not to feed them. So the note here uh, mention, explains that what it's talking about is uh, to avoid touching the animals because you might be tempted to pick up that chicken and uh, slaughter it, take it into the kitchen, and make uh, chicken soup out of it. So since that's probably not going to happen, uh, you don't have to worry too much about it, number one. And number two, we're also only talking about kosher animals that you would uh, likely uh, make a, uh, make a, sh- a yamtif meal out of it. Probably not going to happen uh, with uh, with Rover, so not too much to worry about there. Uh, so nevertheless, we do have a mitzvah to feed our animals before ourselves. So the note here uh, says that indeed you should uh, f- make sure to feed your animals and even feed them before yourselves, before you feed yourself. Uh, nevertheless, he uh, suggests that uh, to, f- to put the food a little bit out in front of them. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's, uh, we're not going into depth about the animals. But rather, we'll talk about the things that do pertain to us. It says uh, further, a little bit further in the same uh, section of Kitzah Shulchan Aruch, we're forbidden to extinguish a fire on Yom Tif. It's even forbidden to extinguish it indirectly. So you should not uh, place a burning candle where the wind might blow it out, uh, even though the place where you put it, uh, no wind is blowing. It's also forbidden to open a door or a window uh, near an open or bur- uh, sorry, a burning candle uh, in the fear that it'll be put out. You're, not, you're allowed to cover a fire on Yom Tif with, uh, with a, 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 a vessel, a bowl or something, or ashes that have been prepared before Yom Tif. In the, even though the, uh, the flame might go down a little bit, nevertheless, your intention is not to extinguish it. Uh, and it's also, it's called a malacha she'en etzrich gufa. You're not, trying to, uh, you're not uh, trying to create more ashes. You're just uh, uh, adjusting the fire. Uh, for the needs so you can bake, uh, you cook your food. It's permitted only when you need it for that day. For the needs of the following night, it's forbidden because that night, the evening belongs to the second day of Yom Tif. You should not kosher utensils by putting them in boiling water or by heating them till red hot. Uh, once they become uh, forbidden for use, it becomes accidentally mixed up into the wrong part of the kitchen. Uh, the laws regarding washing dishes on Yom Tif is the same as Shabbat. And we're not supposed to wash dishes on first day Yom Tif for uh, use on the second day. So after lunch on the first day of Yom Tif, uh, you leave the dishes and clean them, uh, leave them in the evening uh, once second day Yom Tif starts. Not supposed to make a fire in order to heat the house unless the cold is so severe that the food starts to congeal, freeze up. Uh, then it's considered as required for preparing food. But if the cold is not so severe, we should not uh, light the furnace. If it's done by a non-Jew, it's permitted. Uh, that's where you hear the stories in the old country pardon me, about the Shabbos Goy, about uh, having someone who's not Jewish kindle the fire uh, for someone for when the house becomes uh, so cold that it's actually uncomfortable. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that too much here. Uh, uh, Sukkot can get a little bit chilly, but I think this year it's going to be rather warm because it's going to be in the middle of September. Uh, and uh, Pesach, usually uh, much of the snow is cleared out by then. Okay, what else? You're, uh, n- let's see. You're lo- allowed to heat water to wash your hands, but not for bathing your whole body. If you need to warm water, warm up water to bathe a child, it's also forbidden to heat the water for him. 
uh, but you can heat a larger quantity of water, uh, so you need to use a little bit for cooking uh, and use a, little bit, uh, use a little bit for the baby's bath. If the child is slightly ill, it's permitted to have the water heated for him by a nanju. Uh, we should also not start a flame, start a fire from a flint, stone, or a glass, or a match. Uh, rather, we take the fire from one, play, one lit place to another. Uh, okay, so that's a little bit more about Hilchas Yamtev. Uh, please join us tomorrow and we will continue the conversation. Meantime, have a good day.